and l- let's get into the Xbox Series X launch info and then the Series S launch info as well. Uh, so both consoles, and, and this all really came from the leak and then it just sort of caval- it like uh, avalanched into all the information. Um, so the, both both systems are going to launch on the 10th of November and that seems like in most regions. So it's definitely in Australia, US, in Europe, and then, yeah, like all the rest of the regions, I guess it depends on where you're at, but it is a global launch. Uh, in Australia, the Series X is going to be 750 bucks, 500 US dollars, and the Series S is going to be 500 Australian dollars and 300 US dollars. Now, like, you know, I love the finance stuff. You know, no one in Australia, when they talk about comparing prices, adds GST, because in America, with the launch prices, they don't include sales tax. So you do need to include the GST. And then when you take the US price of the Series X, add GST, it's pretty much bang on 750 bucks. So it is very sharply priced, the Series X in Australia, whereas the Series S was a bit disappointing. Like when you when you sort of, you know, convert it, it's about more like about 450, 460 Australian dollars. And they've actually bumped it up to about 500 Australian dollars. And I feel like, you know, I was kind of predicting that they would be selling it for maybe 479 Australian if it was more like 450, that would be such a compelling proposition in Australia. 500, it's starting to be a bit of a stretch. Um, like with these prices, and I, I should just also call out that pre-orders uh, go live on the 22nd of September. So in Australia, you know, I think, you know, big ones like JB Hi-Fi and EB Games are the ones to go to, to you know, because they're the more likely to guarantee the stock. There's a lot of operators out there just to warn people. Harvey Norman, they often have really good deals, but they often also overcommit to the stock and then people actually don't get what they <laughs> what they want. And, you know, I feel like these consoles will be limited. Um, but just getting back to the prices, Swinney, like what did you think of the prices? Were they sort of in the order you were expecting or were you sort of a bit like, oh, a bit disappointed? Oh look, I'm I'm struggling to remember exactly how um, I guess the price point that the 360 and the Xbox One um, launched at, but it seems in line with the with those, if not slightly less potentially in the 360. I don't know if that was like maybe 800 at the time or something like that. I know the PlayStation type, uh, consoles could get up there a bit over on our side. I think the price point um, makes sense. Um, the thing is, I'd be I'm, what's actually really interesting to me is to see what happens with the Xbox One X pricing um, and how they clear that stuff out because that console's a, still a beast of a console. Now, obviously, it's not going to play the, these next generation. Uh, the games. Xbox One X, did you say? Yeah, you can't buy so, it in Australia. It's sold out. It's so, the One X is sold out at the moment. Yeah, it's been sold out for a bit. I actually looked to buy one a month and a bit ago. And I've found out that it was sold out all, like in all of Australia, it's sold out and they're not making any more. The, the one X, well, they didn't state they're not making the one X anymore. They're not making, they didn't say the one X though, did they? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they came out. We, we talked about it. It was a few weeks ago. Was it the one X or I thought it was the, so they're only going to keep producing the, the one S is it? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So they're simplifying. They're simplifying the whole... This this was a few weeks ago. It was actually an Australian publication, Press Start, um, that found out from Microsoft, and then it was basically confirmed for the whole world that, um, you know how they had the three models going? It was like the digital version of the One S, then the One S with the disc, and then the One yeah. X, that they're only going to keep making the One S with the disc model and then retire all the other lines. So yeah, you, oh. can't, you couldn't get a One X for ages in Australia now. Yeah, look, that I, I remember that now, but I'm surprised that you still, like, if, if not that I can in Melbourne right now, but if, if I wanted to walk into JB and actually buy one that they didn't have one, that seems bizarre. Yeah, it's been me. sold out for ages. Part of it is um, with the pandemic, it's just, you know, like, you know, a lot of things have been sold out across the board. Okay. All right. Well, that's, yeah, that's when, when I guess you put it there with, Everything with that, that's just, it's still surprising to me, that's all. So, because considering that the One X is, you know, like, I don't almost understand PS4s being sold out just because, you know, they're, they're generally the ones that people want uh, for this generation. But, yeah. Anyway, well, then that scraps my th- whole thing of being interesting what they, if they drop the price on that and, and try to clear that. So. <laughs> it's already cleared. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, in regards to this, um, you know, the launch date, 
Mm. Look, I'm not going to pick one up on launch. We've already talked about that. Um, I will probably usually wait until there's a killer title that really gets me over there. Um, yeah. And the thing is, I've just I've got so many games still on the One X, and when you factor in PC Game Pass as well, and the fact that I don't use my PC more than <laughs> anywhere near enough what I should um, for how much that, you paid for it and everything. <laughs> yeah, initially, but um, I. <laughs> It's, I think, for anyone, especially anyone that didn't have an Xbox this generation, um, it almost makes sense to pick up a Series S to then jump into that Game Pass world. But outside of that, um, you know, we talked about it before, there's there's, there's no real, you know, the launch lineups are kind of quite lackluster. And so I, there's nothing to drive me to get one on launch outside of the interest to talk about it, you know on on this podcast yeah i know i know yeah and look we're we're fairly the same with that kind of stuff like you don't just buy it because it's out and it's like oh okay you know it's out great you know buy it um but there is a part of me that's like oh i feel like i'm more compelled than normal to actually go yeah i'll go get it which is like crazy um but you know it kind of makes sense i actually just googled um you know like how much the prior consoles launched at so the xbox one in australia was five like 600 and the ps4 was 550 so it's actually kind of surprising like when i read that i was like oh okay like the series x is a bit more than i expected hmm what about does it have information about the 360 there because that's actually the one i'm more interested in so i did check that as well um so the 360 was 650 and then the core model was 500 in Australian dollars. And the PS3 was like heaps more, man. It was like, where was it? It launched in Australia. Yeah, it was crazy. I think it was also, you know, that time wasn't that great because of the exchange rate in Australia as well it was really nasty. Huh. That's surprising to me. I thought the, I thought that the one X, may, sorry, the one may have been uh, over seven, but that's, yeah. So it's actually priced well above what they've previously launched at. Yeah, and maybe the exchange rate was a bit better at that time as well. I haven't, I don't actually have a way to check that right now. Um, but I think at that time, the Australian dollar was quite strong. So, you know, that's always going to be a factor as well. So, like, at least from a US price, you know, it was 400 the PS4, 400 US dollars when they launched that. Um, and then it was like 500 US dollars, the Xbox One. Okay, so that's in line with it. Okay. Yeah, so it does seem like the exchange rate was a lot better back then because even when you just look at it really quickly, it's like $600 in Australia and then it was like $500 in the US. So, you know, like it's actually basically the same price when I just check it now when you think about it, right? So the Series A, sorry, the Series X was fi- like is $500 US dollars and the Xbox One was five hundred US dollars at launch, so mm. like it's only more in Australia now because of the exchange rate. Yeah, I it's it's going to be interesting, as you said, if um if Sony kind of announce over the this weekend, for instance, about theirs. Yeah, you you probably think they will, and you know, can't imagine them being more than five hundred for the 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 disc version of the PS Five now that. Microsoft's moved and sort of announced their pricing just doesn't really make sense. I think it'd be really arrogant to be honest if if Sony released for more than 500. Don't you think? Yes, yeah, sorry. I got distracted. Right. When you're when you're talking, I said I'm just going to chuck up on a new site and and see if like as we're talking something gets announced. But it's what's actually really funny is um in um ah oh, there's in our I guess a uh, all right, let me let me let me try to explain this better. Phil Spencer actually had an Xbox One uh, Series yeah, S. I know, I saw that. That's cool. Like in one of his uh, live streams in the back. That's cool. I like that kind of stuff. Where I'm assuming that was done on purpose, or it could have been. No, it's 100 percent done on purpose. So I, I, I love that. I love that. I saw that on Twitter because uh, a lot of the Xbox marketing team actually said, "Hey, and have you spotted it in other videos they've done?" So there's other videos Microsoft have done where they've actually had the Xbox uh, Series S in the background. Oh, I love that. That is so cool. Yeah, that's- stuff like that's really cool. And, yeah. it, you know, like um, 
Digital Foundry, a part of Eurogamer, like I, I have so much time for their technical analysis of games and also just, you know, consoles. Uh, so they actually had the hands-on back in March of, of this year, which just shows how much COVID-19 has interrupted the plans of, of Microsoft and Sony in this launch year. Um, so obviously they, they wanted to probably release all of this stuff, you know, probably around E3, you'd think, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, E3 would have been, you know, <laughs> like we didn't essentially, we didn't have any real um, console up, uh, hardware updates for ages during that, yeah. you know, the middle of the year. So E3 would have made 100% sense. Because what they, I think they released the Series X around the E3 time. It was around that time from memory, um, but it wasn't like everything. So I, I guess, you know, the conclusion of this is you're not going to pre-order the Series X or S. And and honestly, it doesn't make sense for you because you've already got the One X. Yeah, I've, I've never pre-ordered a console ever. Um, and I've never bought a console on launch that I can think of. I've bought some close to launch, but I've never got one on launch. Mm. Yeah, I got, I've got a few on launch. So I've got, you know, I got the Switch. But prior to that, yeah, not too many, not too many actually at launch. When I think about it, it would probably all be all the way back in the day with the Nintendo sixty four or something like that. That's really going back now. Um, and at this stage, I don't think I'm pre ordering either. I want to know more about the Series S. So, you know, to be honest, I might wait until it actually launches, or you know, you get real hardcore technical folk like Digital Foundry to get it in their hands and you run it through their benchmarks to see. Like to your point before, which is like, you know, how do the games run on the Series X versus S? And are you taking a really huge hit if you're running in 1080p on on the Series S? And if you're not, then, you know, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'll think about getting it. Maybe next year. We'll, we'll see how we go. Yeah. To me, as I said, frame rate is the key. You know, if, Same. If, yeah. if, if we start to see Series S games running at 30 frames, um, like, the, the as I guess the generally accepted frame rate for those versions, then to me, then that's kind of that's not good enough. As in that that's worth spending the extra to get the X. So. 